Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, doing our new moon report for the month of April 2021. And this class will be all about the first day of the first sacred month. In this video, we're going to use scriptural texts to prove how the sacred calendar is supposed to work and how the first day of the first month is determined based on that scriptural evidence. Not only are we going to give you the first day of the first month for the year 2021, but we're also going to give you the dates for 2022 through 2025. And we're going to show you the corrected feast days for the year 2021. And then we're going to go take a look at the scripture to see what events happened on the first day of the first month. These will be historical events as well as the first day of the first month in prophecy. So be prepared to leave a comment as we go. Go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. As we get prepared for our New Year's celebration. Of course man celebrated his New Year's celebration months ago in the middle of winter. No doubt. But according to the sacred calendar. According to the father's calendar, the original calendar, a calendar that we used before man started making calendars, New Year starts in the spring, in the first month of spring. Now you can look up in your encyclopedia how man changed the calendar when he first created his calendar. He had his started in the spring as well. But man wanted to create a disconnect between his calendar and the father's calendar. So one of the things that he did was he moved the beginning of the year back to January. He also made the weeks 10 days long, but he changed those back. Thank the father. And of course, he took all of the holy days off of the calendar and replaced them with holidays. But we'll save that for another class. Okay, so let's go see exactly when the first day of the first month will fall in the year 2021. And to give this video a little bit of longevity, I'm going to show you the corresponding dates for the year 2022 and 2023 at least. But before we do, I need to jump over to the book of Enoch just to give you a brief summary of how the Father's sacred calendar is supposed to work. The reason I need to do so is because almost nobody uses the Father's sacred calendar today. The majority of the world when it comes to sacred feast days go by the Jewish calendar. But we've learned that the Jewish calendar is not at the Father's sacred calendar because during the time of Hillel II and the Council of Nicaea, man came up with a calculation that they used to determine the Jewish calendar. In other words, they have a fixed calendar based on an algorithm or a calculation instead of observation as it was before the Council of Nicaea. Before Constantine and the Catholic Church changed the calendar, man would have to go out and view the luminaries every month to determine the Father's sacred calendar. But today they have replaced the observation of the luminaries with a calculation, which in most years gets them pretty close. But in the year 2021, this calculation is going to have those who follow the Jewish calendar celebrating their feast days a month early. Now that may sound really really bad at first but you have to remember the Feast of Unleavened Bread that week-long feast that we are to abstain from all church doctrine. Well in the year 2021 Easter will fall nowhere close to that Feast of Unleavened Bread like it usually does. It seems as though man's intent was to create these calculations so that Easter would always fall during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, stamping out our efforts as we allow the church doctrine of Easter Sunday to infiltrate our week-long Unleavened Bread appointment. Well, in 2021, those who understand the Father's correct calendar will be celebrating the spring feast in April, nowhere close to the pagan holiday Easter. 
In other words, this will be one of the only years you will get the Feast of Unleavened Bread right. So, in a way, the era of the Jewish calendar turns out to be a blessing, as it always does when we're talking about our Father and His people. But anyway, let's jump over to the book of Enoch, and we're going to see how the calendar is supposed to work. Now, real briefly, we have to jump down to chapter 71 in the book of Enoch. In some translations, it is chapter 72, but in both cases, it is the book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven that tells us how the Father's calendar is supposed to work. If you truly want to know how his calendar works, you can't go by calculation. You have to come over and understand these four or five chapters starting in about chapter 71 and notice that I didn't say nothing about a Zadok priest calendar as some of the other channels talk about as if somehow Zadok was able to override Enoch and the true Enoch calendar was done away with allowing them to create their own calendar and they just call it a Enoch Zadok priest calendar or something like that. But what it truly turns out to be is the creation of those YouTubers. In other words, there are people out there so arrogant enough to create their own calendar. And when you listen to them talk about their calendar, they're not ashamed of it to say that that is their creation. This is my calendar. Just listen closely to the words they use. As they are proud of their creation, they are quick to let you know that they generated that calendar of their own mind. And they just give it the label of an Enoch calendar to make it sound important. As hurtful as it is to know that our father's people are being treated and tricked in such a manner. But, you know, the scripture forewarned us of these days and these times when covenant breakers will come in and lead people astray and that is what they're doing. It should be easy to understand who they are when they're quick to break the second commandment but those people usually don't keep up with many of the other commandments either so now if we know a little bit about Enoch we know that he was taught by the angels. Uriel in particular is the one who showed him how the luminaries are to work. In here we'll find a couple of laws of the luminaries. The first law of the luminary is that the day starts at sunset as you see in verse 2. Oddly enough those who create their own calendars don't bother to pay any attention to this verse and they start the day when they want to. Most of them is when they wake up but anyway the date of their true awakening approaches. Now the most important verse in this discussion is down here in verse 11 as it is telling us the first day of the first month see in verse 12 when it's talking about the solar month and it says when the sun rises in the fourth gate is the beginning of the month we recognize that day when the sun enters the fourth gate as the equinox or the beginning of spring that only tells us the season for us to understand the month we have to use the moon you need both in order to understand the first day of the month and that's what verse 11 is saying along with the appearance of the new moon we have the beginning of the month in other words the first day of the first month falls on the new moon that falls when the sun is in the fourth gate. That may seem complicated, but it's actually not. Matter of fact, let's go take a look at what it actually looks like. Okay, so here we are at the Hillbilly Homestead's sundial. One we created out of an old satellite dish. You can see videos that we've made on this. Now, this is how they actually determined the season and the feast days in old times. They never used barley harvest or cherry blossoms or any other means to determine the feast days 
First of all, because Enoch told us how we were to actually do it correctly. Secondly, in years like sabbatical years and jubilee years, there would be no barley harvest at all to go by and the people would be blind for two years as far as the feast days, celebrating them all throughout the year because there would be no barley harvest in a jubilee year. But no, that's error. We've done videos on the barley harvest proven that it was never supposed to be used in any form of calculation whatsoever as it turns out because Constantine and the Catholic Church took out the book of Enoch out of the Bible they were allowed to create their own calendar it seems to me that that was the purpose of removing the book of Jubilees and the book of Enoch because it would have gotten in the way of Constantine creating his own calendar but anyway, we understand that time to be the beginning of the church age and according to what we read in Daniel, we know that that period is coming to an end. When people will get back to the Father's original calendar, well, here is the main instrument of the Father's calendar and that is the shadow cast by the sun and its position relative to the earth. So, let me show you how this works. First of all, you have the celestial pole that is lined up with our position on the planet. This is an equatorial sundown, so we have to change the angle to match where we live. And by doing so, during the spring equinox, when the sun crosses the equator, it is represented on this sundown because the shadow will follow this line right here. It crosses that line twice a year, once in the spring, and the shadow will continue to get longer. And then in the summer, the shadow will get shorter until it crosses back above this line, indicating that the sun has once again crossed the equator. So now how you use this is you have to understand the gates that are talked about in the book of Enoch and how there are actually six gates or portals that the sun goes through throughout the year. The first gate that the sun enters is the fourth gate. Now it may be a little bit hard to see, but these little tick marks here indicate the gates. In other words, in high noon, when the shadow of this sun will be perpendicular to the celestial pole, the distance that it casts will determine the season that we're in. I know I'm out here a little bit early because I'm trying to get this video published and I don't know if we'll have sun at high noon, but it should be real easy to see that when this shadow continues to progress across the sundial, that it's actually going to end up in the fourth portal letting us know that we are in the first solar month. Now, with that, understanding the first solar month, like we talked about in verse 11, all we need then is the moon to verify the first day of the month. In other words, the sun is telling us what month we're in. We just need the moon to tell us when the month starts. So what we do to know when the beginning of the year is, is simply find the new moon that falls when the sun is in this fourth gate. Now last month, we were out here verifying that 2021 has a 13th month. And what we saw was that the new moon that fell in March actually was above the line indicating that we were still in winter time. When the shadow cast looks something like that, you know that you are in winter time because those tick marks indicate the portals or the gates. This one being the third gate. When the sun is in this gate and you have a new moon, you know that you are in the last month of the year, whether it be the 12th month or the 13th month. So it turns out to be extremely simple and easy to do. And this is the way they did it for thousands of years. 
until Hallel II got involved during the Council of Nicaea and they changed the calendar. Those people are not actually out there using observation of the position of the sun to determine the feast days. They're simply using a calculation. And if you've ever sat through a math class, you know how easy it is to make an arrow when it comes to calculations and equations. And here we are a short time later, and you can see how the shadow is transversing the sundial. And here we are a little bit closer to high noon. And here we are almost right at high noon. And we see that the shadow is definitely being cast in the fourth portal. So all we need to know is when is the new moon in this fourth portal and we can know the exact date of the beginning of the sacred year. So anyway, let's go back and let's use the correct method to determine the first day of the first month of the year 2021. All right, so let's come back to Enoch's book of the revolutions of the luminaries in heaven. And let's actually look at the second law of the luminaries. This one is talking about the inferior luminary, which is the moon. And when we look down here in verses three, four and five of chapter 72, we see that the month starts with the appearance of the new moon. See, verse five says at the time it appears, and it becomes to you the beginning of the month. That's scriptural proof that the month starts with the new moon. But like we said earlier, when it comes to the day, people who create their own calendars decide for themselves when their months will start. But anyway, let's go back to chapter 71, where in verses 41 and 42, we can actually see the last day of the previous year, that 364th day or the last day of the year. Here is where we find out when that day is, how that day is reckoned and how we use that information to tell the head of the year which of course corresponds to what we've seen up there in verse 11 when the sun enters the fourth gate. Putting all of this information together that we see in these two chapters, we see that if there was such a thing as a ball to drop on the New Year's of the sacred calendar, it would be at sundown at the appearance of the first new moon that fell after the spring equinox. But anyway, let's come over and let's see when this date is. Now, according to Google, the spring equinox for the year 2021 is March the 20th. So we're looking for the new moon that falls after March the 20th. When we come over to timeanddate.com, we can see the fraction of the moon illuminated for the month of April. And what we see is that the 0% moon is declared to be at 9.30 p.m. on the 11th. That's when man defines the new moon when it is actually 0% illuminated. That creates a lot of problems for those just studying the Enoch calendar because they wonder how can the new moon be the head of the year when you can't see it. Well, that's man's new moon at 0%. But remembering what Enoch said, the head of the month or the new month starts when the moon appears at the precise time that the moon appears, which means that you actually have to see it. Well, back over here at timeanddate.com, the first day you will be able to see the new moon is on April the 13th when you'll see a 2.6% moon illuminated. So at the appearance of that new moon is the new year. That would be the time to start celebrating right at sundown on the 13th day of April, 2021. And you will celebrate your new year until the evening of the 14th. So the first day of the year officially is April the 14th for the year 2021. 
And using this, which is the correct method for determining the year, we can look in April of the year 2022. We see that the 0% moon will be on April the 1st at 1 a.m., which is clearly after the spring equinox. And we see that on the 2nd will be the first appearance of the moon at 2.5%, declaring that evening of the second to be the beginning of the new year for 2022 and the official first day of the new year being April 3rd of the year 2022. For the year 2023, we'd have to look in the month of March for the new moon that will appear on the 22nd at 1.6%. So the first day of the first month of the year 2023 will begin on the evening of the 22nd and end on the evening of the 23rd for the year 2024. We see that the head of the year will begin on the evening of April the 9th and end on the evening of April the 10th. And maybe by 2025, we'll all learn how to do it correctly. And we'll all recognize the beginning of the year 2025 on the evening of March the 30th, ending on the evening of March the 31st. But as an aside note, I must remind you guys that these computer programs are using algorithms and calculations to determine these dates. And most of the time they are pretty accurate, but I suggest, as I always do, which is try to see the new moon for yourself. Okay, so there you have the correct method for determining the feast days and the sacred year. And here are the corrected feast days for the year 2021. I would suggest you write these down on your calendar. But the observant person would notice that there is no sacred holiday around the first day of the first month. There are only seven divine appointments throughout the year. The first starting with Passover, which is the 14th day of the first month. So what is the significance of the first day of the first month? Well, in this next part of the class, we're going to talk about just that. And to do so, we're going to go down through the King James Version of the Bible and look for what occurred on the first day of the first month. Now, of course, we're talking about the lunar months, which start with the new moon after the spring equinox. Now, don't think that the new year starts with the equinox. No, on a sacred calendar, months starts with new moons. It's even where the word month came from, like month. So let's jump over here to the book of Exodus, chapter 12. When the father is talking to Moses and he's about to tell him about Passover and how they were to put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost so that the death angel would pass by them. You see right here in verse 12. And two, it says, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. And just for an aside note, if you're wondering where those guys got the barley harvest from as the determination of the year, you look in Exodus chapter nine and verse 31, when we see the word barley mentioned for the first time in the scripture. What this is talking about is how the barley was in the ear during the time of the plagues that was put on Pharaoh and Egypt. But considering the fact that we don't know how long those plagues last, there's no way to use this as a calculation for the year. In fact, when we come back and we look at the word barley throughout the scripture, we see that it's never used to determine the year. The first time barley is seen in Exodus chapter nine, and we don't see the word barley used again until it's talking about the value of a homer of barley seed in Leviticus chapter 27. The next time we see barley is in Numbers chapter 5, but this is talking about the jealousy offering. 
Deuteronomy talks about barley in chapter eight, but it's just talking about how the land of our father's people will be blessed with barley. And if we continue through the scripture, even though we see the word barley, we never see that it was used for a determination of the calendar at all. But I think the most significant proof that using the barley harvest to calculate the head of the year is error is how in the year 2021, the barley got it wrong because the fixed Jewish calendar declared the new moon in March to be the head of the year. Surely there were people in Jerusalem that diligently sought out some ripened barley to confirm it for themselves. But just as the people who follow the fixed Jewish calendar, the people who follow the barley harvest all got it wrong in 2021 and celebrated the feast days in the wrong month. To find out the name of the month, we would have to jump all the way down to chapter 38 and verse 18. Where it says, for in the month Abib, thou cameth out of Egypt. And we know that they came out of Egypt during Passover. But the first month goes by other names as well, including Nisan or Nisan. You may hear it called sometimes. They're getting that from the book Esther. Where it says in the first month, that is the month Nisan. Now, the first month was called by other names as well throughout the scripture. As the children of Israel went into foreign lands and foreign nations and spoke foreign languages. But don't be confused. They're all talking about the first lunar month. On the Hebrew calendar. Now, to see the first time that the phrase first month is listed in the Bible, you will start in Genesis chapter 8 and 13, talking about Noah. It says, in the first month, in the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. This is after Noah had been on that ark for months. He was on the ark for over a year as the earth was flooded for about that time. But it was in the first month, on the first day of the first month, that the land was dried up. It was on the first day of the first month that Noah was able to remove the covering from off the ark. Now if you look at my Enoch calendar that I have on the wall, I have the verses with all of these dates written on that calendar. Because I believe that these dates have spiritual meanings and that on the first day of the first month, the spiritual waters will be dried up from our spiritual earth. And as we go by these dates each year, I pay close attention to what's going on in the world and my personal life, trying to see if there's some connection that I can make between the material interpretation of this verse and the spiritual interpretation of this verse. I do that for each verse that lists a date throughout the calendar, throughout the year. So we should write this down in our mental notebook that it is the first day of the first month that the waters will be dried up off the earth. Now we have to remember that the earth was going through a purification process back there with Noah. The entire earth was being purified of all wickedness and uncleanliness. That's why there were only eight people on the ark. Only eight people were found worthy to come through the flood and live in the new world. So we should write this down in our mental notebook that after this purification, it was on the first day of the first month that those purifying waters were dried up, meaning the purification was over. So let's go on to the next time we see the first day of the first month. It is down here in the book of Exodus in chapter 40. Now this is the father speaking to Moses. And he says in verse 2, 
on the first day of the first month, thou shalt set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. So this is significant as we think about our New Year's celebration as how the tabernacle was set up in the congregation. Now, back then, this was a material tabernacle, just like back then there were material waters. But today it is a spiritual tabernacle built in the hearts of humanity. But it is on the first day of the first month that this tabernacle was set up. And we're going to see that this is not the only time in the scripture that the tabernacle or the temple was set up and or cleansed on the first day of the first month. Now, in the same chapter in the book of Exodus, down in verse 17, we see that Moses was obedient. The tabernacle was set up in the first day of the first month. But notice right there how it's saying in the second year. This is the second year after the children of Israel left Egypt. Now, this is important for us to understand in our spiritual journey, because you could imagine that the first time that we start to keep Passover could be like the Noah period where we have to spend a year in a sort of purification process. But in the second year, the tabernacle is reared up. That's what we're talking about when we have to look at the spiritual and the material meanings, because there is a connection between Noah's Ark and the exodus of the children of Israel. This connection is made clear when we look at the dates on which they fell. This is definitely a day for celebrating. Celebrating that our purifications may be over and that our tabernacles may be set up. Now let's go on. Jumping all the way down here to Second Chronicles and chapter 29. Where we start to hear about King Hezekiah. In the first month and the first day of the month. They began to sanctify the temple. There's a lot of sanctification going on here. Now up there in verse 12, you can start to see the names of the Levites. And down there in verse 15, how those Levites were sanctified. According to the commandment of the king. By the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. Talking about Solomon's temple. The inner court was cleansed. You see in verse 16, they removed all of the uncleanliness out of the court of the house of the Lord. Verse 17 was talking about how they started all of this on the first day of the first month and how it lasted for eight days. I think it's clear that we start to see a pattern here. Of how the first day of the first month is a cleansing period. And so we should put that down in our mental notebooks. The first day of the first month is for a cleansing. A cleansing of that inner court. And again we know that that inner court is not in some brick and mortar temple yard over there in Jerusalem. But is built on the hearts of humanity. It is this inner court that is to be cleansed on the first day of the first month. I think the pattern is becoming clear, but let's go on. Let's jump down here to the book of Ezra. Look in here in chapter 6 and verse 19, you can see that on the 14th, day of the first month that they kept the Passover and if you know the book of Ezra you know that this is after they had completed what we call the second temple as Solomon's temple was rebuilt during that time it was during the first month that they went in and actually started making offerings again in that temple that had been destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar 
You look right there in verse 21, how they kept the feast of unleavened bread, seven days with joy. But when you jump down here to verse 9 of chapter 7, you see the first day of the first month that Ezra started to go up from Babylon. It says down there in verse 10, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. This preparation period seems to have started back there on the first day of the first month and lasted about four months. A lot of what goes on on the first day of the first month is about cleansing. I wonder if this is where they got spring cleaning from. When you look down here in Ezra chapter 10 and verse 17, there's a different kind of cleansing going on. It says, and they made an end with all the men who had taken strange wives by the first day of the first month. These are the children of Israel who had beforehand married Babylonian wives are now going in to remove these Babylonian wives from out of the children of Israel. They got rid of all of them. Cleaning the inside of the house and looks like they're cleaning the outside of the house too. They put those strange wives away according to the law. Put the children away too. Babylonian wives will make Babylonian children. But let's jump down to the book of Esther. And we see a different kind of cleansing going on by a guy named Haman. Now Haman wanted to be important in the kingdom of Ahasuerus. But when Mordecai, a child of Israel, would not bow down to Haman, Haman became distraught and sought out not only to kill Mordecai, but to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom. You look at verse 7 after chapter 3, it says, In the first month, that is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast her. That is the lot before Haman from day to day and from month to month to the 12th month. That is the month Adar. And verse 8 tells you how Haman went to King Ahasuerus and said, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of the kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all the people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. Hey, king, let's go kill them all, he says right there in verse 9. Verse 9 said, If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And you can see in verse 9 how he wanted to pay a thousand talents of silver to the people that destroyed the children of Israel, that killed all of the Jews out of the kingdom. He was planning on purifying the kingdom of all of the children of Israel. But if you remember the story of the book of Esther, how Queen Esther changed the king's heart. And it wasn't the Jews that were destroyed, but it was all of the people that hated the Jews that were destroyed. And that's why some Jewish people celebrate Purim to this day. Because of this cleansing process that started on the first day of the first month by the hands of Haman was changed to a different kind of purification by the hands of the Lord. Now, I'm a student of the word just like you are. And in all of these classes, I learned something. And what I'm learning from this class on New Year's is that New Year's is all about cleansing. Now, when I jump down here to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 26 and verse 1 doesn't tell me exactly what month it is. But by not doing so, makes me assume that it is the first month. Here is Ezekiel. Getting the word of the Lord. 
talking about cleansing Tyrus. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Tyrus, and will cause many nations to come up against thee, as the sea causeth his waves to come up. So now this sounds a lot like went on back there with Haman. How you have a group of people that wants to come against the children of the Most High. And how the Most High is going to step in to destroy that people. And like I said at the beginning of this video. How I believe that a lot of these dates that were given back then. In that living parable. Can be superimposed on our dates here spiritually in these end times. And so for those who want to come against the children of Israel. They should also be mindful of the first day of the first month. Because if what I believe is true. It will be during the first month and the first day of the month that the tables will turn. And that the children of Israel will no longer be the tail and will become the head. Now down here in the same book, Ezekiel chapter 29 and 17, I think confirms that the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel in the first month and the first day of the month. Because down here we're also getting another word of the Lord that's coming to Ezekiel in the first month. And in the first day of the month. And what he's telling Ezekiel down here in verse 18. He says, son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyrus. Every head was made bald. Every shoulder was peeled. Yet had he no wages, nor his army for Tyrus, for the service that he had served against it. And verse 19 says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take her multitude and take her spoil and take her prey, for it shall be the wages for his army. This is the word of the Lord coming in the first day of the first month. A day of cleansing, a day of purification. A day of turning the tables. A day of making things right. And down here in chapter 45 and 18, again, we're talking about cleansing the tabernacle or the inner courts. It says, Thus saith the Lord God, in the first month, in the first day of the month, thou shalt take a young bullock without blemish and cleanse the sanctuary. So Ezekiel is confirming what we read earlier by Moses is that the first day of the first month is a time for cleansing. Not only the inner court is re-mentioned down there in verse 19, but the sanctuary is cleansed on the first day of the first month. You have the house of the Lord, the inner court, the sanctuary, all cleansed on the first month as we've seen so far in this video. The strange wives were put away. Even the strange people out of the community. The first day and the first month is a day for getting rid of all uncleanliness. But let's look a little, let's look at a couple of more verses here in chapter 45 of Ezekiel. Because anytime you're celebrating the New Year's of the Lord, you're also thinking about Passover. Verse 20 says, And so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month for every one that erreth, and for him that is simple, and so shall reconcile the house. Talking about the seventh day of the first month. And verse 21 says, And in the first month, in the fourteenth day of the month, ye shall have Passover. A feast of seven days, unleavened bread shall ye eat. So it makes sense that all of this purification and all of this cleansing is going on. We're cleaning our houses, getting ready for the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread. So this brings to mind baptism and how we are able through the power of the water to cleanse away all of our sins. And wash away all of our stains on our spirit by way of baptism. 
So as we're cleaning our house, our inner court, our sanctuary, getting our wives and our neighbors straightened out, should be a time that we should be considering getting rebaptized again. This time, understanding that it is repentance that we're seeking in that water. Not a rite or a ceremony. But a cleansing of our sanctuary. But whatever we decide to do, it is New Year's. This is a New Year's celebration. A time for celebrating a new year. Getting off to a clean start maybe should be the thing. But our primary goal should be the purification of our sanctuary. Cleaning out that inner court. Making ourselves ready for the temple of God to fall upon mankind. Talking about New Year's. The real New Year's. Shalom.